Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in, and welcome to Duckpin TV's coverage of the Women's National Duckpin Association Connecticut Classic. We're here at Johnson's Lanes in Hamden, Connecticut. My name is Eric Latesca. I'm pleased to introduce my broadcasting partners, both with us for the first time, Luke Robistelli and Lori Schreiber. Lori will be joining us in just a moment, but Luke, first, this is the first time Duckpin TV has coverage to w, covered a WNDA event. Tell us a little bit about the WNDA and how this tournament works. Thank you, Eric. The WNDA was established in 1982 to showcase the finest in women's duck pin bowling. Since then, they've held a series of professional events in cities from Virginia to Massachusetts. Qualifying events typically have eight games. In this instance, 18 bowlers advanced to the matchup round in divisions of six. Bowlers from each division, the winners from each division, and the best of the second place bowlers advance to the finals. We have the pleasure of watching those four bowlers compete in a ladder style format over the next several weeks. Sure to be an exciting match, Luke. We're going to take a step away for a moment. Make sure you stay with us. We'll be back in just a few. Thank you. Johnson's Lanes is located in the Hamden Plaza in Hamden, Connecticut. We have 20 beautiful duck pin bowling lanes and arcade games. Johnson's is great for open play, leagues, fundraisers, and parties. This year, Johnson's Lanes will be celebrating 60 years in business. Join the celebration and enter to win a half-carat heart-shaped diamond. Monthly drawings will be held January through August, culminating in the grand prize in September. Come on down to Johnson's Lanes in the Hamden Plaza. Would you like to see more events like this broadcast on Duckpin TV? If you would, please consider donating. All of your donations will be used to purchase new equipment to improve our broadcasts. If you would like to donate, please visit us online or contact a Duckpin TV rep. That's www.duckpintv.webs.com or visit us on Facebook. This week's WNDA trivia question is... Who has the most ladder appearances in WNDA history? Ponder that for a moment and stick around. We will reveal the answer later in the show. All right, welcome back, folks. Once again, I'm Eric Latesca. Luke Robistelli joins me in the booth, and now it gives me pleasure, a great pleasure to introduce Lurie Schreiber. Lurie, thank you for being with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, let's take a look at today's ladder. Uh, our top seed is Connecticut's Erica DiStefano. Our second seed hails from Massachusetts, Paula Fletcher. Uh, Bowie, Maryland's Amanda Zangla is in the third spot. And Connecticut's very own Debbie Vincent is our wild card for today's match. Our first match will be Debbie Vincent versus Amanda Zangla. Um, as each bowler comes up for their game, we'll review how they made it here to the finals. I can tell you all four of our bowlers are excellent bowlers, and of particular note, none of them have yet to win a championship, so any one of them would be thrilled to walk away with it. Yeah, thank you for that introduction, and we've got Amanda Zangla taking lane nine to kick this match off. Oh. Amanda throws a great ball. Leaves, hits a little bit light on the on the head pin and leaves herself the 710. Amanda Zangla qualified 10th in this event with a 1078. Her match play record was 3.5. She tied one match, three and a half and one and a half, and shot 700, which is an average of 140 for three, for five games. That half win is actually what put her on the ladder today. She grabs the seven pin on her second ball. I always find the first frame the most difficult in the ladder. Just you've got your nerves in front of you. It's always nice to get up there. She certainly opened, but the fact that she hit the head pin, covered the 7 and the 10 for a 10 box, all in all, not a bad start Absolutely. for Amanda. Let's see what Deb can do here. Deb Vincent qualified 12th in this event. She shot 10.65 and her match play record was 4-1. and one. She got to 7.22. Really impressive bowling to get, to get herself on the ladder. 
Absolutely. Debbie's been a member of the tour since its inception in 1983. She was also a member of the Ladies Professional Duck Pin Tour before then. Deb's looking to get herself a 10 here to tie Amanda through one. We got one frame in the books, tied 10-10. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention at this point that Deb is my mother-in-law. Yeah. So while we do like to remain impartial. <laughs> Keep that in perspective, folks. And Deb's quite a character, so I'm sure the holidays are, <laughs> are Absolutely. in your house. Deb's lucky enough to have her, most of her family here with her. Her daughter and Luke's wife, Kristen, keeping score. Grandchildren, Reese and Chase are both in the crowd as well. And there's a better first ball than the last frame. Bit unlucky, a little heavy. She leaves the 4 7 10. Certainly a tough spare to pick up. You know, at this point, you're just looking to 10 this out. Oh, and Ooh. takes a really good shot at it. Almost caught that four pin on the outside and slid it over. This is Amanda Zangla's second year as a member of the Women's National Duck Pen Association, uh, and this is her first ladder that she's participated in. Do it. Uh, beautiful, ball. Beautiful, ball. Beautiful, beautiful ball. Clears the plate. Pretty you can see in right that there. delivery, she was very comfortable. Absolutely. Solid balance, good follow through. She was our 2013 Rookie of the Year. So making it to the final ladder matches was just a matter of time for Amanda. I believe this is her first appearance on the ladder. It is. Yeah. As a veteran of the WNDA, Larry, what advice would you give for her as a first-time participant on the ladder? I think the most important thing to remember on the ladder is you're bowling your game. You can't do anything about your opponent. You just get up and bowl your game. And whoever has the better game... Oh, and she... Gets a, a pin that worked really hard. It looked like one pin cleared out the 3-4-6-4, three, three, four, four, and she's now looking at a double. She sure is. She's been throwing the, throwing the ball with a lot of confidence this weekend. Now you mentioned it earlier, Larry, that when you're on the ladder, you have to bowl your game. Deb finds herself in the hole here, but she's just got to kind of relax, take her time. Absolutely. Just relax and continue to throw your ball. Oh, uh, and answers right back. Another beautiful pitch of her own. Crosses over, gets in the 1-3 pocket, and just nearly clears the plate. Yeah, nice to see her come right back after Amanda throws that double. Absolutely. That's so tough. It's always nice to get that first mark on the ladder, too. It kind of takes just a little bit of pressure off when you get up on the lane. And you hope that maybe that gets inside of Amanda's head a little bit, that I'm sure. not backing down here. No, the, the tough thing to remember is there's nothing you can do about the score your opponent puts up. All you can control is what you do. That follows that up with another ball in the pocket. Doesn't quite get the, the double, but... No, but she broke nine. It could very easily have been the five pin standing there with it. So she's got a shot here. Keep it close. Mm. Mm. Didn't look like it missed by much. I don't like she just dropped that ball on the line just a little bit and it coasted off to the right. No, yeah, a little no. better follow through on that ball. Well, let's see what Amanda does here. Deb left the door open that frame. Threw the strike to come back a little bit. Drop nine, missed it. It's Amanda's amazing how small those single pins can look. Especially in a one-game match. Absolutely. She doesn't waste any time up there. Gets right up, throws a hammer for eight. Always very interesting watching the different pace that bowlers have on the ladder. Some bowlers more deliberate. Some a little bit quicker. Oh, 
And it drops her shoulder a little bit there. They Crosses herself over and misses to the left. They both do look very relaxed, though. That could be the difference. I'll tell you what, we talk about it a lot growing up, and even when we're teaching our youth bowlers, we always talk about the importance of the third ball. It takes on some added significance on the ladder. Yeah, you can see both of our competitors have, have really dropped one pin each. What a one-game match. One pin can make the difference. And just a bit outside there, inside the three pin. Leave something to shoot at, though. This is definitely a very makeable spare. Oh, and gets it out over the line. A bit unlucky there. Yeah, hit the object pin. Maybe a little bit heavy on the head pin, but the two pin going back and forth across the lane didn't, didn't quite carry that seven pin. And she gets the ten. So an update on the score, folks. Uh, so far we have Deb Vincent. Uh, through four frames, she has 48. Amanda Zongla has 65 in the fourth. She's completed her fifth frame. She's got 75 in the fifth. Deb looking for, looking to capture the moment here and start making up some ground. Again, off the head pin a bit, but again, something to shoot at. Very makeable spare for Deb. Looks like a nice follow through. Very nice. And again, Eric just talked about the score. You can't you can't stress enough being down 17 pins when you get up there with something to shoot at. So now being down 17 on a spare. She's got a chance to put a big count on this. Put a mark and put a little bit of that pressure back on Amanda coming into the second half of this game. Yeah, get it down to single digits here with a nice fill. Again, Deb being maybe just a little bit more deliberate than Amanda up there. Kind of taking her time, cleaning her ball off. I think a lot of that speaks to the experience as well. And she just barely misses the head pin. She's still on the inside of the three pin. You usually get a pretty good mix out of that. You can see it's, that exactly happened for her. She's looking at the one pin. It's amazing. Every, everybody talks about duck pins being a game of inches. And it's amazing how close that was to being a two fill. Instead, she gets lucky, drops nine, leaves the head pin to shoot at here. And had she actually made, uh, she covers a spare. Uh, had she actually made contact with the head pin, that would have been a strike. So, all right, folks, we'll do one quick update on the score here, and then we're going to take a quick break. Uh, through six frames, Deb Vincent has 77, working on a uh, spare. She's trailing uh, Amanda Zangla by eight pins. Amanda has 75 in the fifth. So we'll take a quick break now and uh, have a word from our sponsors. We'll be back in just a moment. Lucky Strike Lanes is located at 185 Stafford Road in Mansfield, Connecticut. That's Route 32 right across from the drive-in movie theater. Lucky Strike has 24 duck pin lanes and is home of the Eastern Classic, duck pin bowling's most historic tournament. Lucky Strike is also a great place for birthday parties, group outings, corporate functions, and fundraisers. Lucky Strike also has lanes available for open bowling. Rock and bowl every Friday and Saturday night as well. You can visit Lucky Strike Lanes at luckystrikelanesct.com or on Facebook, Lucky Strike Lanes CT. Hope to see you soon. This week's WNDA trivia question was, who has the most ladder appearances in WNDA history? The answer is... Diane Sika. She had 32 ladder appearances and 10 wins. All right, welcome back, folks. We will get back to the action in just a moment, but first we would like we would like you to get to know one of the bowlers a little bit better. Before the match, I grilled Amanda Zangla with as many questions as I could in 60 seconds. Enjoy, folks. 60 seconds. Okay. Here we go. High game. At 200. Favorite pizza. Uh, cheese. Favorite dessert? Uh, 
Brownie Sunday. Favorite color? Blue. Best bowler? My dad. Plane, train, or boat? Uh, plane. Beach or pool? Beach. Shaken or stirred? Shaken. Hot or cold? Hot. Favorite bowling alley? Uh, College Park. Favorite vacation spot? Uh, Ocean City. Favorite cereal? Uh, Cheerios. Favorite celebrity? Uh, Julie Roberts. Rihanna or Taylor Swift? Rihanna. Pitbull or Eric Church? Pitbull. Baseball or football? Uh, baseball. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Now back to the match. We remain, uh, we have a single um, eight pin deficit separating our two bowlers. Amanda Zangla is about to take the lane. She has 75 in the fifth. Deb Vincent has completed six frames, has a 77 plus her first ball of her next frame. Again, maybe just a little bit of that experience you were talking about here, Larry. Deb gets up, throws a couple marks, puts a little bit of pressure on Amanda. She's had a rough couple frames, comes up here, misses the head pin. Well, Deb gets back up two frames ago when she's 17 down. She leaves two singles. She makes them both. At this point, she's got half a game. She makes her singles, gets her wood, and she can chip away at that 17-pin lead and turn this game around in the second half. And to, Man to Amanda's credit, she really hasn't thrown many balls off the mark. She just threw, happened to throw one in a, at an important moment. We'll see if Deb can capitalize on that. And again, she, she's still up here. This is a big third ball. Every, every couple pins, they're going to come back later in the game as this thing gets close to the finish. So again, through six frames, Amanda really only has that double to show. She's open here about four frames in a row. Could be feeling a bit of pressure. Yeah, you can see her tensing up just a little bit when she gets up to throw the ball. A little bit of frustration up there. As we've seen her thus she far in this be, match. Might be moving a little quick up there. The adrenaline gets a hold of you and makes it difficult to keep everything together. Yeah, nice deep breath. Beautiful is. cover. Staring at the 1 2 7. It's the same shot she had just a few frames ago. Just barely missed it. She it's just it what she fun. needed. Absolutely. Right on time. So here comes Deb, bowling her seventh frame. Down seven in the sixth, but she's on a hit here. Oh, what a pretty bowling ball up there. Nice yeah, pitch for nine. Leaves Deb, the five pin. Deb sort of comes in from the left there. It's always uh, it's always nice when you can put the ball in the one-two pocket, have a little bit of extra drive into the pocket. And now we can see if she can convert this spare. Now the game has changed. Deb goes in with a two-pin lead. So let's see if she can make this. And she does, no question. Keeps the pressure on Amanda. Well, that's three marks in a row for Deb. And Deb has now taken over the lead. She leads Amanda by two pins. They both have a mark in the seventh. Uh-oh. And I think Luke has been stressing the importance of the third ball. I think it's important to note that Deb now leads this match by two pins, and Amanda has lost two pins on the third ball. Deb's first ball a little off the mark there, but she gets back on it to cover the spare. Comes back nicely on the second ball. Yeah, I think I think she got a bit lucky that frame. You know, first ball held on to a little bit. Even that second ball looked like she dropped at the line, and it was fading away and just stayed inside that one three six for a spare. Nice. Oh, Amanda, a little nice light on the one in the one-three pocket, but gets the mix. Uses the walls in this place. Very well, effective. That's a big ten pins. If I've got the score right, Eric. That puts Amanda up one in the seventh, one hundred four to one hundred three. Both on hits in the eighth. It does great match. Amanda's got a chance here with a good ball to put a double on this. Really put some big pressure on Deb. Any mark here on the head pin, eight fill, nine fill.
All right, well, she's on a strike, so she still has another ball. Hey, we've seen her a couple times miss right on that first ball. Even that strike she threw last frame was a bit light in the 1-3. Had some pins sweeping across to kick that 7-pin on the end. I think Amanda might be a little bit prone to dropping her shoulder. She takes a really good shot at that 5-pinner. Gets 8 out of it. Going to leave an open frame up there, but an 8-fill really helps at this, time, at this moment. And big spot for Deb here, 113 plus. She's down nine on a spare. She's really in a position here where she probably needs at least one mark. She can put some pressure on Amanda. Two, put some real pressure on Amanda. But at least one mark here to give herself a chance to win this game. Yeah. And Deb's going to close out her game here with these two frames. Nice. Nice ball. That was That's a big nine, Phil. A beautiful pitch. High flush, one two pocket. Leaves a ringing 10 pin. And without this ball, folks, the match is tied. Oh. She looked like she dropped it right at the line. Okay, big, big miss. But with Amanda's nine box, she's still got a chance to be up a pin here if she makes this. That's a big pin. And she covers it. <coughs> Big pin. And this is where it gets very interesting here. Even a 10 box here is going to put Amanda on a mark. But Deb can go 20 in the 10th here and really put Amanda on a double. It's a yeah. big frame for Deb. Very nice ball. Beautiful pitch. Reminds me of the last frame where she hit the other side of the head pin and left the ringing 10. This time she leaves a ringing 7. Two good first balls. Duck pins, everybody will tell you, is a spare game. Oh, the ball just ran out of lane there. It's all right. And this is a big pin. Big third ball. We've been talking about it all game. Oh, and she rushed it up there. So now the at door this point, is open. It is. Amanda needs 10 to tie, at which point we would go into a two-frame roll-off. I'll tell you what, 10's not always that easy it either. It's not. You'd like to see Amanda get up here, hit the head pin, leave a spare to shoot at. But if she leaves some pins up there, leaves a split, could be a very difficult second and third ball. Nice ball. Uh -huh. There's that spare break you were talking about. Big kick out on that four pin. A bit heavy on that head pin, but certainly good to see her come back after being right a little bit the last few frames. And here we go, folks. For the match, Amanda takes the lane. There you go. Covers it. And this match is all but over. Amanda needs to keep her foot behind the line and keep the ball on the lane. Absolutely. I tell you what's very nice to see with it being her first ladder match. Um, on the Pro Tour, it's nice to see her go up and throw the ball. It's so easy to try to guide it, try to place it where you want it, but she did not do that at all. She threw the ball. She got it. She was aggressive. She earned it. It was a great match. That will conclude match number one. Um, Amanda Zangla victorious over Debbie Vincent. She wins by two pins, 143 to 141. And we will be back in just a moment with a word from our winner of the first match. Stay tuned, folks. Johnson's Lanes is located in the Hamden Plaza in Hamden, Connecticut. We have 20 beautiful duck pin bowling lanes and arcade games. Johnson's is great for open play, leagues, fundraisers, and parties. This year, Johnson's Lanes will be celebrating 60 years in business. Join the celebration and enter to win a half-carat heart-shaped diamond. Monthly drawings will be held January through August, culminating in the grand prize in September. Come on down to Johnson's Lanes in the Hamden Plaza. Would you like to see more events like this broadcast on Duckpin TV? If you would, please consider donating. All of your donations will be used to purchase new equipment to improve our broadcasts. 
If you would like to donate, please visit us online or contact a Duckpin TV rep. That's www.duckpintv.webs.com or visit us on Facebook. Welcome back. We just saw Amanda Zangla defeat Deb Vincent 143 to 141. Larie, tell us the moment of that match. I think the moment in that match was the seventh and eighth frames. Amanda, uh, after Deb had just gone on a four spare in a row run, Amanda broke nine in the seventh frame, made it, and then threw a strike behind it. I think that switched the momentum in her direction. And as I said earlier, she's been throwing the ball with a lot of confidence. Thank you, Larie. We're going to pass it off to Eric, who's with this week's winner. All right. So I'm here with the winner of, our fir of the first match of the WNDA event at Johnson's Lanes. Uh, Amanda Zangla. Amanda, this is your first ladder appearance, so now you are 1-0 and on the ladder yes. career. Yes. Uh, the last match, there was, it was neck and neck through the last several frames there. You got up in the 10th in the frame needing to get 10 to tie, Mark and Phil to win. Yeah. What was going through your head as you took the lane on the first ball? Um, just as my dad always told me to um, reach up high, <laughs> so... Yeah, it was just, it's very nerve-wracking, so. <laughs> Great advice from Dad there. Yeah. Got you, through, got you yeah. through your first ladder match. Yeah. So um, you're now going to be challenged by Paula Fletcher next week. How do you, how do you assess your chances? How, what's your confidence like going into the next match? Um, well, now that I won the first one, I'm pretty confident, but I'm still, I'm still nervous. So, but. Okay. Well, congratulations Thank on the you. first match. And tune in next week. Ladies and gentlemen, to watch Paula Fletcher take on Amanda Zangla. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to Duckpin TV's presentation of the Women's National Duckpin Association. At this time, we would like to thank all of the volunteers, donors, and the host bowling center for making this show possible. Make sure you tune in next week on Monday, June 30th, as the WNDA Connecticut Classic continues with Amanda Zangla taking on Paula Fletcher for the right to advance to the championship match. Stay tuned to Duckpin TV, the home of Duckpin Bowling.